Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today I'm going to show you how to build an Elementor landing page for lead generation. Let's dive in. So there are a ton of landing page funnel builders out there. We use Unbounce a lot, but there's other ones like ClickFunnels and High Level, for example, has their own kind of landing page builder in there. But a lot of people coming into my community have really started talking about Elementor and how flexible it is and how many different things you can do, how fast it is, and also um, how good it is for SEO purposes and ranking and things like that because it's connected to WordPress. So I gave my uh, web designer, Alan, a little bit of a challenge and he's gone and built a um, landing page for you using Elementor. He's gonna show you how to do it and how simple it is. So with that, I'm gonna hand over to him, enjoy. And if you've got any questions, please comment below and we'll get back to you, speak soon. Thanks for that, Dan. So exactly, we're gonna be building out a landing page inside of Elementor. We usually use Elementor for building out websites, but they also have this tool for building landing pages. So once you've got your WordPress dashboard open, you go over to Elementor and templates, click on landing pages. And here we want to add new. So once you've got this opened up, it's gonna show you an array of all of their templates that they have, which are really good starting points for when you want to start building out a landing page. So let's just have a quick look at them here. So we've got these sort of blank wireframe ones. These are really good as they give you a, a wide open space for you to just start, start building out with, with colors, images, call to actions, titles. But what I might do is find one that's closely aligned to the brand that we've got running at the moment. We've got a, a brand which we've shown many times on this channel, which is Aunt Meg. That's one of our lead gen brands. And I'm kind of looking at this one here. I might use this one as a bit of a springboard to get it started as it's center aligned, much like many of our landing pages for this particular brand. So let's start with this one. What you're gonna do is click insert. And here is your landing page in the builder. I'll just hide this for a second. And this is what you're gonna see. So it's all laid out like this. You can just hide away the, the sort of builder area so you can see what it's like in a browser environment. Got some accordion menus here. And call to action with a button at the bottom. So now that this template has loaded up, we can start changing some things. So here we have the logo, and we can simply choose a site image for it. I'm gonna go down and hit our logo there. And that's added that in there. Alternatively, since this is on your WordPress site, you can quite easily go down to dynamic tags and click on site logo, and that will change it to the logo that you use on your WordPress site. That will make most sense for most people, but for this example, I'm just showing it on our flexible site, so I'm not gonna use dynamic tag for that. Um, so now I'm gonna remove this video here. I've got no need for that in this template. Let me just extend this down a little bit. I'm gonna go for pixels and extend it to about there. And I'm actually gonna duplicate this here. So now I've got two versions of this. I'm gonna remove these extra steps here. So in this box that I've just created, I'm actually going to drop an HTML widget. So I can drop that in there, and I've got my lead hook quiz. Simply paste that in there. I'm gonna remove this heading now. Then I go down to this section here, and I wanna remove some of this top we've got. So now I'm going to increase the width. Let's actually call it a thousand. Hit preview changes. Then we go here and we can see it in full here. And now I know where my uh, my quiz is going to be. I'm just going to start making some changes to above the above the fold section just so I get a feel for what the page is going to start to look like. So I'm going to add in our title here. Which is going to be, we've helped thousands of Brits reduce their debts. And this is a little bit too big for me, so I'm going to go over to style, typography, and you can see we've got a, a font size that's 110, so we're going to reduce that down to about 64, looks good to me. 
Okay. Then we've got this sort of accompanying text. So I'm going to change this over to this 23 second assessment. We'll check if you could write off up to 75%. Now I'm going to dupe this and add in another line of text. Cool. Now, I don't like how far these are spaced out, so I'm just going to click on the pen here, go over to advanced, and just take away some of the bottom margin there. Cool, that's good for now. Now, I don't need this button here, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to go up to the top and get rid of some of uh, this space here. About 460. Maybe I'll just push that to 470. Now let's update some of these sections. So for here, we can just do a bit of a about our meg section. Here we can do Aunt Meg has been seen on. And here I might add in some of the uh, sort of publications that we've had. And here we've got some stats. I probably won't use these. And then some frequently asked questions. So let me get rid of these. And now, like you've seen me do with, with this copy here, much the same, I'm just going to go in and start replacing some of this copy with our own. Okay, so now I've put my copy in. Let me just get rid of some of these extra frequently asked questions that came with the uh, that came with the template that I don't need. Okay, go for frequently asked questions. Right, now, this button here, I'm going to add a link to, let's call this quiz. Now, in order to get this to link up to this section, I'm going to have to give it I have to give it a CSS ID. So, let's call this quiz. Now, I'll click this button, it's going to drag us to here. I'm going to do the same to this button here and stick quiz in there too. Show you a better example there. It takes us right to the quiz. Now let's look at updating some of these fonts. We often use poppins on our um, Aunt Meg brand, so I'm going to go through and start to update some of these fonts. With Elementor, you get some really good fonts along with it. So poppins is included, luckily. I'm going to include that there. Drew that down to 58 now. I'm actually going to increase the line height a little bit too. To about there. And now I'm going to run through and do exactly the same sort of thing to this typography across the page, just updating everything to Poppins. All right, so now that we've sorted out the fonts, I'm gonna go and add some more images. So Aunt Meg has been seen on. These are just sort of icons that Elementor has in, in their library. So I'm gonna replace this with an image. I'm just gonna squeeze that in there and upload an image from my files. I think I'm just going to reduce the font size of this too. So, I'm 
OK. And now let's look at updating the colors. So just so it's more on brand with what we have for our Meg. I'm going to go with the main color being blue, and we have a sort of secondary color that's an orange. I might use, I think I'll use this orange for the color, for the, uh, the buttons. I think that's fine to keep them as is. I'm going to change this one to blue. this. Okay, now let's add in some footer information. So yeah, I won't be using this one here. So let's see what Elementor has for footers. So once you open that up, you can go to blocks and go search footers. I'm just going to preview this one here. Okay, let's go with something like that. And here you can just add in a little text editor here. I'm going to keep that there. This is where you'll paste in your sort of footer information. Let's just make this all white and the correct font. Okay, great. And you might want to add in another one where you can um, have your sort of terms and conditions. On a normal website, I would use this to input a menu. Uh, you got an like an icon layout here, but what you can do is add menus that allow you to sort of navigate. You can choose a menu from your um, from your website to add there. You might want to do something like that for your um, for your terms and conditions and privacy policy. For this situation, when we're making landing pages, I'm going to get rid of that. Let me just update this. I'm going to go for just add this with the sort of final final CTA here. Now, one thing I will say, we've got a lead hook quiz here that I will quickly show you on preview. Um, you don't have to use lead hook. You can use something like a form. Um, Let's just have a look and see how this looks now. So yeah, this takes you through. Um, so like I said, yeah, you can use something like a form. In that case, you would simply drag in, or at least type in form, drag in a form. And Elementor has this sort of default layout for their form where you can change the fields and everything and sort out where what the actions are after you submit. So that can be collect submissions in WordPress, or it sends an email. So we can have it sent to our support desk email, for example, with uh, with all the fields that it comes with, and even attach uh, a, a sort of pre-filled message if we, if we need it to, for whoever is going to deal with that email. So we're not going to use that today, but that is a prime example of how you would collect um, information you may have it go to an email that is connected to our CRM and then that sorts out all of your leads that come through. Okay so the last thing I'm going to do is just sort out some of the spacing on this page. So I'm going over to my preview I can see that there's quite a large gap between here and the next section so I'm just going to close that gap a little bit by reducing this top to pixels. Let's make it 60. Actually I might go for a I go for a hundred there. Same for this one. Top, hundred pixels, and again, top, hundred pixels. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. That was an extremely quick and simple way on how you can build a landing page inside of Elementor. 
instead of using unbounce, instead of using click funnels, go high level, simple quick build inside of Elementor using their templates, changing colors, updating fonts, putting your own copy in and adding your own branding. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. All right, cool. I hope you've enjoyed the video today from Alan. If you have liked this video and you want um, to see more like this, please let us know by giving a thumbs up. As I said before, any kind of comments or anything like that, please do get in touch below and we'll get back to you. And finally, please subscribe to our channel so you can be the first to know when new videos come out. I'll speak to you soon.